you overpromised. You have to underpromise. So first of all, I wanted to thank everyone for joining tonight after just probably a really long day, I'm guessing. And I wanted to get just, I wanted to hear from, first of all, I wanted to say thank you, Kenneth, for, for joining us tonight. And I wanted to get just some general impressions that you're walking away with from this conversation with all the teachers. Well, the first thing I have to say is, Sarah, you really have to let your personality show a little bit more. You know, you just, you're holding it back too much there, you know? Uh, no, just, just kidding. Yeah, I need to get more authentic, I've been told, and tell people how I really feel. Yeah, so let I, us know how you really feel. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake up tomorrow and start telling people how I feel. Uh, no, seriously, this is, uh, it's, first of all, it's an honor for me. I, 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 I'm not saying that glibly or, you know, just to make you feel good. It's an honor for me to listen to you guys talk about what you're going through. I feel in a way the same sense of, of honor that I get when I'm talking to people who have been in the service and, you know, they've done extraordinary things. I, I do feel that you are on the front lines uh, and you're in a war and we are not giving you the weapons and the equipment that you need to win the war. And so that's always been my feeling about teachers, but it really um, hit home tonight. So this has been a very um, uh, profound uh, experience for me. And so I thank you for um, what you do, but also sharing that t tonight. Um, I, I really don't think I have too much to add to what we've said already. I mean, we have some really extraordinary problems in the country right now. Um, getting through this uh, COVID situation is going to be a, a long haul. And it's, I think, very important to be honest and uh, about that. We're, we haven't had enough honesty from the leadership about this and if we had done some many things differently we might be in a different situation i also do feel that we're in a real struggle for the soul of our country and um i i, I don't say that lightly um i've never said that before in, in writing and thinking about history for for 30 years so it, it really is uh these are the tri times that try men's souls so um uh, what you are all doing is heroic, and uh, I'm very, very grateful to have been able to hear it tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and just to add on to that, my takeaway, and then I want to hear from other people, was that we're, I think what's so inspiring to me about teachers, and it always has been, and I'm a teacher too, but what inspires me to keep teaching is other teachers and your passion and, and just creativity when you can't really imagine enduring a crazy day at school, you see a teacher doing this amazing activity and then it inspires me to do something, try to be just as creative. And the times that we're living through right now is, is really challenging us to be maybe more creative than we, we might be able to be because we're dealing, like you said, with something that is just a once in a lifetime, it's a once in a lifetime pandemic that has been terribly mismanaged. And that's an understatement. But I will say that what inspires me is not just the teachers, but then what we were talking about is what fuels us is the students. And my biggest takeaway was I feel like as a group, we walked away by realizing that we stay, you know, like Amanda was talking about and Catherine and Lena, we were all talking about how much we put into this, we're putting into this year more than other years. But what fuels us is our students. And um, we're already seeing, even though we're seeing them on screens, we're seeing how much they need us. And I think that they didn't realize how much they needed us until they didn't have us for a while during the quarantine and the separation. And so I am feeling this palpable enthusiasm to learn again from kids who I knew last year who would have probably been not participating. And I do think that they are activated by this terrible disaster that we're in right now. So they need us more than ever. And I think that that's what fuels us right now. So that's my biggest takeaway. And that's what's, I mean, as I shared, you know, I'm trying to share more Ken and everyone, but I, as I shared today, I cried today a lot. And 
what's going to get me up tomorrow morning and maybe not cry as much is this conversation and, and, and reminders that we're doing this for kids and we're doing this to have a better future. And that sounds corny, but it's true. So I wanted to hear, I know Catherine, I don't know, can, can we hear from you? Like just, you don't necessarily have to talk about your situation, but I just want to get like your takeaway from the conversation that all the teachers had tonight. Oh, oh yeah. There Sorry, you trying to unmute. <laughs> well, You're kind of doing well, a lot right now, so I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so my big takeaway from this tonight is that no one understands you like a fellow teacher. Despite what our situations are and how different they are, um, we can feel empathy towards other teachers, no matter what their situations are during this pandemic. And every situation is incredibly different, but they all have the common thread of being difficult. It's difficult. This is not an easy job on a good day. And then to add the pandemic, and the stress of trying to teach children in person or online by juggling your own children at home, possibly. I mean, it's, it's a lot right now. And talking to other teachers makes me feel so much better to know that I'm not alone and that my fears about being in the classroom are justified and that are felt by other people. Um, where I am, they're not feeling as much fear as I am. And I'm not a, a scaredy cat kid. I, I flew after 9-11. I went to um, countries in North Africa that aren't necessarily friendly towards Americans. But I'm worried about surviving this year. My husband survived a tour overseas. He doesn't know if I'll make it through my school year. And I have lung issues and I have asthma and I'm incredibly nervous. But Talking to other teachers makes me feel so much better. So thank you guys for that. Thank, thank you. And I, I wish I, I wish we could do something to get you out of this predicament. I wanna, I wanna call everyone at your school and tell them they need to wear a mask, or I'm gonna be really <laughs> mad at them. But oh. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be scared. I don't know. It's I don't mean to make make light of the situation. But because it's, 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 listen, I just want to say that I've felt the same way even in New York City where I feel like, am I crazy that I'm scared? Because other people are like, it'll be fine. No. And I think that's important that we have these conversations because our, our governments and our leaders are trying to gaslight us and make us think it's okay and it's safe for reasons that are not to protect us. And so I, I want to just say to you, and I know you already know this, but I just want to say it because I'm kind of saying it to myself. It isn't safe. It's an airborne disease. I read Ken's book. It's not safe. So you're not, so all the extra protections you're trying to take, if people are laughing at you, let them laugh because your life is more important than, than what they think. And that's what I keep trying to tell myself and everyone else who feels, who's being smart, right? So thank you. And I wish I could do more, but we're all in this together. No, we're not. We are. We're all, we are. Some of us are in this together. Amanda, so thank you so much for also being just so real with us about what a day-to-day -day is like for you. I, I wanted to get also your impressions and just your general takeaway from the discussion tonight as well, if you don't mind sharing. Um, well, like Catherine said, it's, you know, even though we're all in different situations, there's some commonality with, you know, this is just really hard. And, you know, not that teaching's ever easy, but um, like we're all in different, um, it's it's different this year and it's uh, it's we and there's nobody like when you in the past when we've done something new you can always look to someone else somewhere that's done it before and and you can look for guidance from an expert and there really isn't anybody to turn to right now so we're we're just trying to figure it out and you know we're very creative you know I, I'm I'm getting inspired by what I see other people doing and and we're you know I think 
there are some some positives that are coming out of this, but it's just there's never enough time and enough resources and and there's just so much coming at us that you know and I think that's even though each of the teachers that that were were speaking were in slightly different situations and and different communities um I think that's the common thread and and that's what makes it you know such a challenge that's a really good point and I hadn't really thought about it and you articulated perfectly that there is a lack of expertise because we're in this brave new world where, I mean, I guess, thankfully there's Google Classroom and Schoolology, so we have these places to start, but there, there really isn't, the, you, the platforms only work, go so far. And yeah, we are basically in this new frontier and no one's been here, but then people are also expecting us to act like we know what we're doing. And then as teachers, our, our, we're so good as teachers to act like we know what we're doing or even know the answer when we don't. And I do that with people sometimes that aren't teachers. They're like, wow, you, you, you explained that, like you really understood it. And I was like, I know, and I don't at all. And that's what we do. And I think it's incredibly frustrating to be in a situation where I'm like, having to admit to my students that I'm like, oh, I did this handout last year and I thought it would work this way, but good point, that doesn't work. And it's so hard to do that as teachers, right? So I think that's a really, thank you for sharing it and, and I'm gonna start thinking of it that way as well. So thank you. Oh, I don't know why I muted myself, see? I don't even know. <laughs> now I'm gonna mute myself. So Lena, Thank you so much for, for joining tonight and sharing. And you're a fellow New York City teacher, just different, different borough. We have, some, we have some crossover in terms of our experiences because we're in the same city. But I was, I was struck by also just how different our setups are. And I think they are across New York City and then across the country. So I wanted to get, that being said, I wanted to get also your impressions and just your general takeaway from what you heard tonight. I mean, it's a lot of what was already said. So, you know, what Catherine said, it's just knowing that we're not alone, like even outside of our little bubbles. You know, I knew I wasn't alone in my building, but who's had time to breathe? Who's had time to see what's going on in other buildings, even your borough and the state and then across the country? I had no idea. I mean, I heard some stories tonight that not only made me feel like I'm not alone, but made me feel lucky. Um, and that was not something I was expecting because I've been feeling so sorry for myself and sorry for all of us. So, you know, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story. I really appreciate that, Catherine. Um, and you know what Amanda said, like that was articulated so perfectly, nobody knows what they're doing and this has never happened. You know, I'm a senior teacher, I'm at it almost 20 years and I'm the person people come to. And now here I am, like I'm the older person who doesn't have like the technological abilities that some of the other teachers do. And it's extremely overwhelming. But like also what you just said that, you know, we're the ones that know how to fake it. And we're the ones who know how to make people feel like we've got this. My kids are actually really appreciating that I don't always have it. And like in the middle of a lesson, like there's a complete meltdown and like the brand new program that I set up last night, like now we're gonna use it and it completely fails and people can't log in. And I'm like, all right guys, I'm trying this for the first time too, like not a big deal, we'll try again tomorrow. It's kind of like a relief in a sense, if that makes sense, like it's okay to make a mistake right now, like no one's really expecting otherwise. So I don't know, I guess overall tonight though, I just am so appreciative that I found this, this space, so thank you all. Thank you so much for coming. And I agree. I mean, I guess the having like being vulnerable with the kids has helped me bond with them. And also one thing I don't miss, sorry to my assistant principal, I don't have to worry about observations because there, because there is no, I thought of that today. I was like so miserable and I was like, well, the good thing is no one can jump in my class right now and tell me that there isn't enough, you know, whatever they're looking for the flavor of the month or the flavor of the year. I can just, do my thing. And today I went on Google Earth with them. So that was cool. If my principal came and she'd be like, why are you on Google Earth? Like what's happening? Like, I just want to jump in because something, something you just said is it's, it's so powerful in a way that this idea that you probably all feel this and I'm, I'm going to guess you all feel this, that this, 
you know, always the need to be perfect, always the need to have everything under control must be such a powerful part of your lives. And maybe there is really something great about this moment when you can say, we're, we're all in this together and we're not in control anymore. And uh, maybe that's, that's a way to be a little liberated by this. I, I, you know, I hadn't thought about it at all, but it, it's, uh, you know, we can, we can be a, a, maybe a little bit more self-forgiving right now than we might ordinarily be. And, and, and that's a, a, an important thing, I think, for people to realize as well. So thank you for that thought. Yeah, I think that's, that, and I feel like I wish we brought that up in the larger conversation because I think that is such, that that's such an integral part of being a teacher. Of it, even if it's not your personality when you go into teaching, it's the way to survive in the classroom of just kind of like always being able to seem like the authority and then kids looking to you as having the answers. So then you just have to kind of perform that role. And, and also we love structure. And I think that's also driving people crazy. Like I used to make a joke that if I find a to-do list from, I've been teaching for almost 20 years, like, like, like a lot of you probably. And I've, I always have these like to-do lists, you know, like, photocopy this handout and like I'll find to-do lists from five years ago on, and to the date it's the same to-do list and I love it and and this is the first time ever that my to-do lists are like grade this thing on edu puzzle or whatever it's called and I don't know like go on AP classroom and look at this instruction I, I don't even it's it my to-do list has changed and I think that's really it, it, it kind of throws you off. But that being said, thank you so much for everyone and everything you shared. Does anyone want to add anything else that they think is important that they heard tonight or that they share that they want to uh, reiterate that they think other teachers should hear? Just one more thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so inspired by all of you. Does anyone else want to say anything? Can I say something like not to other teachers, but just to the public in general? We're working really hard. We're trying to figure this out. Teachers aren't lazy. Teachers aren't wanting to stay home because it's easier. This is challenging. I feel like a brand new teacher. I've never worked more hours. As we're sitting here, notifications from my Google Classroom are popping up of kids who are handing in work. And I'm going to go grade it when I hang up because I know that they're struggling and I want them to get feedback. We're trying. So give us a break. We miss the kids. We miss you so much. We miss normalcy. Just, we love everybody. And I don't know, show us a little bit of respect, please. <laughs> That's so true. And I want to read, I want to second that when we are tweeting or commenting or texting our friends about what we're going through and that we, you know, some teachers are saying they think the schools aren't safe. It's not because we don't want to do our jobs. And I think it's, I always say that I don't think the classrooms are safe and that we shouldn't, but it's not that we don't want to, I don't think people realize how hard we worked in the spring. And I, and I don't think, people realized that we were, we were actually like, there was no bound, most teachers we spoke to this summer, there was no boundary between school and home. Like, like Lena just said, I'm grading and responding to my students. I have insomnia. Sometimes I would grade papers at two in the morning because I wanted to give them feedback. And the big joke with my students was miss go to sleep because I, didn't, I forgot that they could see the timestamp when I was grading and commenting. And so they were like, this teacher doesn't sleep. And, and I didn't understand it until later, but all of us were doing that and are doing that. And I know everyone in the room probably has not slept in weeks. We have one teacher right now who's working at her other job. I mean, so I think that's important. Like, I want to get rid of that impression that, that teachers are lazy, that we're living off the government dole. I've, I've had people tweet at me, like, then get another job if you don't like it. I mean, it's just so stupid and cruel, but I think it shows like what Ken was saying before, it just shows that we need to rethink what we, what, what education is and, and what teachers are doing and, and start 
start paying attention more to what teachers are saying and and forums like this are helpful because it allows it's going to hopefully get more people to hear from us because we are kind of like huddle in our classrooms usually doing our thing grading our papers going to bed and doing it over again and because of the social media and because of zoom and the lack of being able to be in rooms together perhaps we can promote that message more and let's just remember we're the same people who you trusted your child's life with in the event of an active shooter so we haven't changed <laughs> in fact we still have to do active shooter drills during a global pandemic because that's America. Vicki, is that good or do you have any other things you want us to add?